Last night was the Academy Awards. The big story, of course, was CODA, a cinematic breakthrough exploring children of deaf adults. Will Smith was so moved by the movie, Will decided he too would start talking with his hands. Take a look. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh, wow! Wow! Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! Wow, dude! Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I could, oh, okay. That was a uh, greatest night in the history of television. Okay. What did you see last night? There was more to it than Will Smith punching Chris Rock, but I saw it as a bit of a microcosm for everything that's wrong in Hollywood and America. I, uh, I saw the video. I was not watching live, and I watched it. Uh, repeatedly a couple of times my first reaction i'll be very honest with you still somewhat of my of my reaction is that it's hard for me to believe that this was not staged i've yeah. looked at it over and over again and i'm going to be very honest with you i looked at the exact point of the slap mm -hmm. it looked like a completely traditional hollywood slap i agree chris rock leaning in both hands back his face is already clenched before the slap even comes. And when you watch it, you don't, I, I've, I've played, David, I've played this baby 75 times. I don't see his hand touching Chris, Rock, Chris Rock's face. But you hear a sound. Let me play it one more time, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I agree with you. It sounds like a sound effect. I I know. But I, here's, here's the thing, though. Right after he said, you just slapped the shit out of me. Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. <laughs> then he, asked, let me ask you a question, David. Who, even a comedian entertainer, if someone does something so out of the norm to come on a stage and slap you, is your immediate reaction is to get back into comedic character? To be like, oh, wow, Will Smith just slapped the, the S word out of me. Yeah, it's incredible. And just act like you're doing a bit. But he was flustered. He... I mean, if you hear what he says afterwards, he... he doesn't get flustered until Will Smith goes to sit down and start cursing, you know, keep my, 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 you know, my wife's name out your effing mouth, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth. And then Rock is like, okay, okay, fine. We'll do that. The whole thing looks so abs... Jason disagrees with me on this. It looked so absolutely staged. First of all, remember this. Rock makes the joke about the um uh will smith wife's jada pickett smith's hair right jada i love you gi jane too can't wait to see it all right <laughs> <laughs> it's, that was a that was a nice one okay first of all number one on its face i didn't even understand the joke until i hit the googles right i, was like, I don't even what what, what I don't, how was this what is this a, i don't get it and then I went to the Googles and I was like, G.I. Jane. And I was like, okay, the star of the first G.I. Jane had really short hair and Jada Pickett Smith has really short hair. So he's making a joke about her being the next G.I. Jane. And I was right. like, it's not even that big of a, it's not, it's not a, a good enough joke to get upset about. And I'm like, right. David, if I'm not mistaken, I think you were like a professional comedian at one time, right? I mean, like. I, I thought I was. <laughs> the but, audience I mean, was. The joke didn't even hit as a joke, right? What's I, what's the ultimate irony is that after Rock delivers the joke, the camera pans to Will Smith. 
Will Smith is laughing his patootie off. Right. At this corny joke. So what exactly happens between the camera panning away from Smith and going back to Rock that Smith, that he's laughing. Meanwhile, you look, you see Jada Pickett Smith's, his wife's look, and she looks kind of flustered. She doesn't look like she's outraged. She looks kind of flustered. So the camera pans off and it goes back to Rock. And then a few seconds later, you see Will Smith walking up. So what happens between the time that Will Smith was laughing at this rather corny joke and he starts to walk up to approach Chris Rock? Obviously, the logic tells you that his wife, who immediately when the joke is delivered, looks kind of like, oh, here we go with this nonsense. Well, you know, thanks, deep, deep, thanks, no thanks. But she didn't look angry enough like at all. She looks just kind of annoyed. But obviously, my this is my instincts. When she saw uh, Will Smith laughing, listen, you guys have been married. I'm not married, but I, I had parents. Everyone who's married will tell you that their wife or their spouse can give them a look in one way and they immediately know, like, oh my God, I'm in trouble now. I screwed up. Right, right, right. You know? So I have a feeling that at a certain point, when she sees him laughing and she, he looks at her, she cuts him a look. Yeah. And kind of like, you're going to let him get away with that look? And I have a feeling he's kind of like, I got to do something here. Or I'm going to be the doghouse and reacts. Now, that assumes we believe that this wasn't staged. I still believe that this whole thing could have been staged. And this is the, this is the thing, right? Staged or not, there's one thing that I think is absolutely clear here. This is not about Chris Rock. This is not about a joke. This is not even about the slap. This is about the fact that Will Smith, who is probably worth a few hundred million dollars, who is a top tier male star in Hollywood, Perhaps the biggest, I think he may be the biggest in Hollywood history. Okay. Understand that. Listen, <laughs> Dave, you've been in the entertainment world. You have probably hobnobbed with more of these people whose name, that, more than their names, I don't even know. Okay. No, no. Understand something. Will Smith is not just an entertainment, entertainer. He is a business commodity that's feeding a few dozen, if not maybe a hundred or so people. Okay? At the level, what I'm saying is that at the level of entertainer that he is, this guy is not just a regular guy. He's not the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He's an industry. He is a commodity. In other words, he has a market value to the Hollywood machine that is more than just a personality. All right, he's what you would call a tastemaker, a thought leader in the Hollywood media establishment. Okay, what that tells me is that there are people in that entertainment world who have a financial interest in making sure his image is not only pristine. But everyone's got to love Will Smith. So why would he resort to professional wrestling? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Which included, okay, which I'm included go the F word. Which, I'm going to go there. Okay. Will Smith, in the last two or so years, had a major chink in the armor. What was the major chink in the armor? You might not know this. I don't know if you're in the cultural milieu. Will Smith's wife has right. an internet show called The Red Table Talk. Right. The, the, the open marriage? It's beyond the open marriage. It's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. The Red Table Talk is basically Jada Pinkett Smith's opportunity to vent her various midlife crises, issues, problems, problems with aesthetics, her life, 
pro, you know, she had a bad day at the DMV. Her daughter's weird. Her daughter's trying polyamory. All kinds of weird Hollywood people crap. They talk about on this show and try to normalize it as like a regular family problem, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. At one point, she admits that she had an entanglement with a 26-year-old, I think his name was Rapper, his name, I think his name was August something. I forget the guy's name, right? Right. Now, she invites her husband, Will Smith, on her red table talk. And he's asking her about what happened with this kid, who apparently the kid was a troubled kid who they kind of like let into their sphere. I don't know if he lived in their house. I'm not absolutely sure. But the kid was in the, the young man was in this in their sphere of influence. Kind of like the Falwells. Right, okay. Understand, Will Smith is about my, I think he's literally my age. So okay. This kid could be Will Smith's son. Right. All right. So the kid is in their sphere of influence. I'm not absolutely sure if he's in the house or not. We can check, fact that, check that later, right? Mm -hmm. So Smith is asking her what happened with, with Augie. And she basically says, well, we had an entanglement. When you watch Smith's face as she's explaining that she basically had an affair with this 26-year-old kid, his face looks like someone told him that his daddy wasn't his daddy. Like, it basically just, like, drops. And then she said something to me, to me that was beyond humiliating. And I think any man, any guy who's been married, any guy who's been in a relationship, any guy who's had any intimate relationship with a woman would realize what she was saying when she said this. He asks her, which I think was a mistake to ask, why did you do this? And she said, I wanted to feel good. It had been such a long time since I felt good. Don't you understand? I wanted to feel good. Listen, mm -hmm. I may maybe my tele my radar is off. David, you know what's the first thing that's going on in my mind when I hear something? <laughs> that's okay. I I mean I would be upset if. Uh, I think you can tell what what I think is going on in a man's mind when he's watching a wife tell her husband that she had an affair with a twenty six year old kid, and he asked why. She said, "I wanted to feel good." I'm not, I'm not trying to get accused of anything that will get me sued, but right. allegedly in my mind, I'm like, Will's not uh, laying the pipe. Uh, he's not exactly doing his uh, manly duties. Are you saying he's a Scientologist? No, I'm not saying he's a Scientologist. What I'm saying is that the, image, the, the message she conveyed in saying I wanted to feel good was that it, it sounds like Will was not making you feel good in some way. So you needed 26-year-old August to help you make you feel good. So the point I'm trying to convey to you, David, is that she basically cuckolded him publicly on the internet. Right. So he wasn't punching Chris Rock. He was punching the 26-year-old, right? He was punching a narrative that, was de that had developed about himself, particularly in Black online spaces that Will Smith was not the alpha male. There's this whole discourse these young kids have now. I find it hilarious. I find it hilarious because I was in a fraternity in college and the first letter of my fraternity is actually alpha. We actually called ourselves <laughs> alpha men, which is kind of <laughs> interesting, right? But there's this whole new trend that these kids have now, which you guys didn't talk like this when we were coming up. Right. They're like, oh, I'm an alpha male, or he's a beta male, or he's a right. signal male. And I was like, first of all, do you guys know this is all like eugenics discourse? I was like, where does this come from? Like, it is this whole thing that guys use these Greek alphabet letters to illustrate their personality hierarchies. It's a very kind of millennial thing. It, I frankly think it's driven by the rise of this incel culture and this also this kind of like manosphere. Frankly, from my analysis, David, there are a lot of troubled, insecure men, many of them young, some of them older, who are dealing with a crisis of masculinity, much of which has significant political ramification because they also are attracted to the alt-right 
and Trumpism as well. And there are a plethora of socioeconomic factors. That Did it back then in 2016 root out the incel community and work with Cambridge Analytica, the, the, the how to pick up women? Yeah, the, the, there, there is a, there is a, there is an, uh, a, a co a, there's a combination of the pickup artist community, the men going their own way community they call the MGTOW, the the uh, the uh, the the uh, men's rights activist type. I remember the men's rights activist types when I was in law school in the nineties. They've been around for a while, but, but they so, weren't like this. This no, is they weren't like this. They were no, they were not. They were they, not. They, right. They were. But th these are almost proudly celibate men who accept the, the the hierarchy hierarchy, which is why they're susceptible to the intellectual dark web and Jordan Peterson, because they believe in a hierarchy. And these incels believe that they're the Stacy's and the Chad's and that I, not, yes. only 90 percent, 90 percent of men are not chads they have to get facial work done to be desirable that it's the chads who are getting all the women they do accept the hierarchy which makes them prone to steve bannon the right wing and jordan peterson you know you obviously are very conversant in this world well i'm a uh incel i i doubt that we're a lobster i can't but the larger point that I'm trying to convey to you is that in, the, in this world in which digital media has an influence over the consciousness of people who buy movie tickets, Will Smith's persona took a significant hit from that right. episode. And there were a variety of other revelations that came about about their relationship. There were always rumors that they had an open marriage. I don't know. The, I'm not interested in the details of that. Hey, everybody, I have an open marriage and I'm single. That's no big thing. There you go. Have the you heard I'm trying to... Mike Cernovic and the gorilla mindset? There's a whole uh, nexus, as you say, between acting like a, a traditional man, a monster, and... Uh, being able to pick up women and owning the libs. I mean, that's the Mike Cernovic uh, model of politics and love. There's a whole, listen, listen, I have, let's talk, as we always do, let's talk candidly, David. My position is that there is a, since the 2008 crash, particularly, there's an increase in economic precarity, fancy word for saying people are not getting good jobs, making good money. Money is scarce. Men are not able to replicate the traditional post New Deal, Ozzy and Harriet, my father knows best image of masculinity. Because frankly, a lot of guys are noticing that a lot of the women they like have good jobs, make a lot of money, more than them. Right. Right. right? And second of all, a lot of these girls, excuse me, I shouldn't say that, women, are very smart, very educated, and they're just not impressed with you like strutting around because you just look like you came out of the gym. They want to have a conversation. They want it to be treated kind of nicely. They actually want to be stimulated outside of their like genitalia. And the way to stimulate their genitalia is by stimulating their mind. Right, exactly. And there is a certain caliber of these men who because of that economic precarity, maybe haven't gone to school, don't have that good six, six, seven figure job, don't have that income caliber, and their capacity to exercise another word, <laughs> hypergamy, which a whole lot, this, all of this discourse comes Her out of that. What is hypergamy? Hypergamy is the process by which women choose men who are high on the hierarchy of, uh, of uh, desirable traits, particularly traditional normative tra traits of being a provider, caretaker, uh, being masculine, being able to care for them. So men, so women, the, the, the theory is that women use hypergamy as a means to choose a mate. In other words, women look for men who make good money, who are good looking. Who have good sperm. 
Good sperm. Yeah, look, all of that, all of that stuff, right? So it's, it's kind of an evaluation process. All of this language comes out of these movements. And because some of it's all Darwinism, eugenics, all of this crap, a lot of these young guys, because they are feeling that they cannot compete within the norms of uh, female hypergamy standards, they're becoming frustrated and resentful. And they're echoing their resentment in these online spaces, podcasts, YouTube conversations, et cetera, et cetera, all of these things. And it's becoming replicated in political discourse and being fed upon by personalities like Jordan Peterson and a whole bunch of people in the alt-right who are basically telling these young men that they are being robbed of their divine masculinity because the evil feminism has displaced them and the postmodern neo-Marxist, cultural Marxist destroyed the good old days of America. Right, right. There is the phenomenon, we, we do have to, we didn't talk about what we were uh, planning to talk about. This is uh, fantastic though. 